boys and girls, welcome back to another episode at Nettle Barn. This time I'm going to be showing you building my stud wall in and my mezzanine floor. But as you can see, I've already done it. Um, had a little bit of a mishap with my computer and I've lost a lot of the files from this episode. So, slightly different format, I'll just show you a little montage of building this, the videos that I do have, and then I'll come back to you and I'll show you how I've got on, show you what I've done. little montage so let me show you this mezzanine floor first show you what I've done so this is going to be the bedroom and the way in which I've constructed it I've got these these two metal box section beams that were put into the wall when we rebuilt the wall put a link to that here um, and then on this far side I've got a section of 4x2 that I've resin fixed with M13 bolts into the wall all the way along and then the, the metal beams because I can't obviously put joist hangers onto the beam itself I've put 4x2 either side and bolted that through again with M13 bolts and then these these joist hangers as well the the four inch mini joist hangers so normal joist hangers would be quite a bit longer but these are made with uh, thicker gauge steel so they're basically the equivalent but a lot thinner and this this has meant that I've been able to build this whole floor with a thickness of four inch so it's given me a lot more headroom inside um, if I stand over here you can see head headroom wise I mean I've still got to put my floorboards on and the insulation is going to come down to probably here we can still walk around in a, a good area up here um, and then I've got my my window obviously as well so you can walk out into this bit nice so yeah that is my mezzanine floor I think I've uh, covered everything there now let me show you my stud work for my walls I've uh, stood the whole place out inside all round internally and this is so I can insulate it 
because normal building construction you would have a, a cavity with insulation in but this is a, a solid stone wall it's 450 thick just solid stone so there's nowhere to insulate so I had to build this, this stud wall to be able to insulate it internally and what you actually need with a, with a natural stone wall with lime mortar is, is an air gap behind so air can flow all around this wall and then I've got my uh, uh, ventilation at the uh, eaves here and at the ridge at the top so air will be able to flow all around everything um, so it's basically I'm building a house within the house with a, an air gap all around in between so it can all breathe so this is this has got the 70 mil PIR insulation in going in between all the these uh, timbers and then there'll be insulated plasterboard on the top to, to cover the bridging bit of where the timbers are but I'll cover all the insulation in a separate insulation video now this gap doesn't need to be this big that's just because I'm running this wall up uh, level and the, the barn itself is running out um, but where I've got the mezzanine floor dividing the wall up I managed to step that top off back a little bit so the bottom half continues straight and then you can see I've stepped that back like six inch so I've gained a little bit more space upstairs and you really got to, to take each wall individually and do what's best for it like this, this gable end here that wall if I'd have built that up level it would have come up in this window here um, so I've lent that one back um, the the end wall in the bathroom that end is is lent back as well the rest of them are level well you just got to do whatever suits in a building like this you, you've got to work with what you've got um, the only places that I haven't uh, physically stood out to insulate is the cheeks here so I've brought the last stud level with the end of the window and then insulated plasterboard will just run across the internals of the, the cheeks same with this uh, stub wall here I just have insulated plasterboard there and there but then above the door I've stepped it out with the in, uh, stud in again so I can insulate it properly and I've insulated all these internal corners as well um, see better on this one so because there's a stud there and a stud there you won't be able to get to this internal corner to uh, insulate it so I've already put the insulated board in there ready so I've put one stud in put the insulation in put the other stud in and I've, I've fixed all my stud in with uh, screws as well because that way if anything needs altering it's easy to undo it change it and screw it back in. Um, construction wise with the stud walls it's just a, a bottom rail, a top rail, verticals in between at 600 or less and then noggins where needed but you just gotta again think about where everything's coming to, all your boards and everything where it's all gonna attach so it, when you do your plasterboarding it's as efficient as possible um, I think that's about everything I've got to tell you to be honest so um, thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe click my little icon in the middle here and I'll hopefully see you on the next one